Hey guys, it's Jeff, John, and Lego in the garden. We like to dog sit, uh, but today we're gonna talk about tomatoes. We just put our tomatoes in the ground. A lot of you beginning gardeners probably have tomato cages, which if you've heard Brigitte talk about them, she hates them. Uh, but some of you may have seen our lower and lean method, which we're gonna show you what that looks like, but today we wanna talk about how to build a cage for a determinate tomato. But before we do that, John's gonna give you a quick lesson on indeterminate versus determinate, and what are the differences there. Chances are you've seen our lower and lean video, but if you haven't subscribed or you're new here, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, let us know what you're growing, and if you have any questions. Indeterminate varieties are going to continue to produce fruit over a long, period of time. We also like to train them down to one liter, so that means we're taking off suckers, and with that in mind, we like the lower and lean method because this string allows the main vine to come up along. We use the plant clips to keep it guided all the way up, and then when it reaches the top, we can unravel the bottom because that part is just the stalk. It's not going to have branches at that point. It's not going to have fruit. All the fruit is going to be going upward. If you're growing indeterminate varieties, this video is not so much for you, but be sure to check out our low and lean video as well as the updated version. All right, we're here at our vertical trellis and I actually have some indeterminate tomatoes that I wanted to point out. Every type of tomato is going to produce these suckers in the crotches. With indeterminate, since we plant them closer together, we're gonna wanna pick these off, but do not throw these away. You can put these in a cup of water after about a week, roots are gonna come out, then you can stick them in the ground and you have free brand new tomatoes, but that's beside the point. So these are indeterminate, they're called San Marzano, which are long Roma-shaped tomatoes, and we grow them up a trellis. I've got three on this wide trellis, it's about eight feet tall, and they're gonna go with one liter all the way up. But come right over here, and we've got a big boy tomato cage with a small, tiny Roma in there. And you're thinking, that's kind of overkill. Trust me, into July, this sucker is gonna be full of tomato. And that's why a simple tomato cage like this just doesn't work. You're gonna wanna give determinate tomatoes plenty of air space, plenty of space to grow out. Because like we mentioned, you prune suckers there but with determinate tomatoes, you're not gonna wanna prune. Maybe get the bottom leaves so they don't hit the ground, but once it gets up a couple inches, you're gonna let every sucker, every branch just go crazy, get as bushy as it can, and that's gonna increase your harvest. Because again, determinate tomatoes produce tomatoes in a determined period of time, meaning all at once. They're like sauce tomatoes, like aromas. This is what the finished cage looks like. We wanna spend the rest of the video showing you guys how to build them. So you can take a plant like this and give it the support that it needs. So let's go check it out. Okay, here we are standing behind a cattle panel. And before we get started, I wanted to let you guys know we did not invent this method. There's tons of videos and all kinds of actual variations on what we're gonna show you of how to make a big sturdy tomato cage. But we wanna show you guys how we're gonna do it on our homestead and uh, do a little how-to. So John, what do we need to get started? All right, ingredients list. First thing up, one cattle panel, 16 footer. Also, need something to chop up the cattle panel with, so some bolt cutters. Next up, this thing. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Next up, a post driver, a T-post. We're only gonna need one for this project, so this is all we need. And because we're cutting up the cattle panel, we're gonna use some zip ties to keep it all together. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about price. If any of you have ever priced out cattle panels, you know they're not cheap, and they're not. I bought this one in Southern California for $33. For this project, I bought four of them. So if you follow these instructions, you're gonna have enough pieces of metal to make seven. All right, let me just pause right there because a lot of you guys are thinking, $132 for seven cages, that seems ridiculous. Why don't I just go buy tomatoes at the store? Yeah, you could go buy tomatoes at the store, but if you wanna grow them really well, you've gotta have structure. Now I understand a lot of you are gardening on a budget. We are gardening on a budget, but this is something in our garden. We love Roma tomatoes. We love making sauce. We love storing them. We love making salsa. So it's an investment that we've decided to make to give ourselves more Romas because in the past we've used tomato cages and honestly, the production was very low. The cages fall over. There's 
uh, spider mites and white fly. There's no airflow. So this year I finally bit the bullet, saved up, and we're gonna make some real nice tomato cages. But also remember, a cheap tomato cage at a store may only last one, maybe two seasons after it gets all jacked up. This thing's gonna last forever. If you're still with us, you're probably like, how the heck do I make this? Let me show you. You're gonna have to count off six sections. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna make a cut, which means we're gonna lose this entire row because we don't want sharp metal sticking out. And then for our next piece, we're gonna start here. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna lose this row. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna lose this row. And then we're gonna have a piece of three left over that's we're gonna put four of those together at the end to make that seventh cage. All right, we've got one section down. Let's get the other one ready. I'm out of breath. That's like, check it out. Free garden markers. Now remember, always measure once, cut twice. Okay, so now we're gonna bend it like Beckham. I really didn't wanna make that joke, I might cut it out. Okay, one thing you're gonna wanna figure out is what side of the metal are these lateral pieces affixed to? You're gonna wanna bend so the lateral pieces are on the outside. If you try to bend it the other way, you're just working against yourself. Okay, so you're gonna find the middle piece. One, two, three, one, two, three. This is right in the middle. I'm gonna give myself maybe an inch away from the center piece, just so I can get this curved up my goal is to have it curve right on this lateral right here. So let's see how I do. Beautiful. So don't worry if you go too far, you can always get it back to a 90. What you're gonna wanna go for is something like that. That's right about at a 90 degree, degree angle. This is a little too tight. So I'm just gonna open it up a little bit and then do this twice, and then we'll get them connected. So now I got my two pieces. We're gonna take our T-post, our two panels, and the zip ties. Let's go over to that tomato. Poof! We're here, we have the two pieces, the two 90 degree pieces here. We'll get them centered around our tomato and zip tie them all together so we have one big unit. Now for those of you who have never seen a zip tie before, watch, I'm gonna do it wrong. Get that nice and... One quick thing to note, the reason we're using zip ties is because we love plastic and we think it's great for the environment. <laughs> T-post, driver, we're gonna drive the post. One thing I need to do real quick is I've got a, a little high spot where the locking path is. I'm just gonna dig this out so we can get this level before we drive it in. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want it leaning or you're more likely to have it fall down. All right, before we drive it in, we're actually gonna move the cage away for a minute. So that's why we like to do this when the tomatoes are small. You don't have to fight with them. You're not gonna break too many branches, hopefully none. But we're gonna move it away, drive the posts in, now that we know where it needs to go, and then bring it right back and zip tight up. Straight enough. Cool. Multi-purpose cable ties. So you could use these for all sorts of things. Just saying. So now we've got a cattle panel that is big enough to support a gigantic, huge, determinate tomato. And don't forget, when tomato season is over, you could use these things in the winter for your peas, any climbing winter vegetable. You don't have to disassemble them and just sit them in the garage all winter. You can use them all year round. What we wanna know is, have you guys made tomato cages like this? How did they fare? Like I said, this is the first season we've used them in the homestead. I'm really looking forward to it. But we wanna know what type of tomato trellises are you guys using? Using cages, up a string, up a wall. We want to get creative here on the homestead and we're always looking to learn. Yeah. Cool. All right, sweet. Now, if you don't have a lawnmower, you can always come through and get those extra long pieces of grass, those blades, and show them the real blade. Oh no, it didn't even work. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>